We got just a few minutes after the top of the hour here on Penn's Peak Radio, and we're going to jump right into this because I'm so excited to have this lovely lady on board. I'm telling you, this woman has been in the country music industry for quite some time. Uh, she's been a country music singer and songwriter. Uh, she goes back a ways into the 60s and managed to have such great longevity as a solo recording artist. She's worked with stars, everybody from George Jones to Farron Young. She's got some really great hits out there. I'm sure you're going to remember them. And she's still active today. And on top of it all, she's got some new music out there, which is very exciting for everybody involved. Please make welcome to the show a very honored guest of mine. I'm so excited to have her, Miss Margie Singleton. Hey, Margie, how are you? Hey, Casey. I'm, I'm good. If you call good having the flu, I have the flu, but it's not contagious over the phone. <laughs> well, I would talk to you anyway because it's such an honor to have you on the show. And I know, you know, we chatted a little off air and and mentioned about how we could probably talk for hours and hours and hours about everything that you've accomplished. You have so many notches in your belt. You probably have 10 belts of notches of all the things that <laughs> you've done in your amazing career. But um, how about if we, we just shorten it up just a little bit. But what I really want to know is I always am intrigued on how people got into the industry, how they kind of managed it a little bit, and then we'll talk a little bit more about some of this new music, because I know that's one of the things you want to make sure people are aware of, that you have some new stuff out there. But oh, let's, yeah. let's step back just a little bit, and Margie, go back to you. Tell us a little bit about Margie Singleton and how she got all those amazing titles and awards. Go back and tell us how it all began. I'm always, always interested in how it all got started. Okay, well, we can go back to the to the to the birth of Margie Singleton musically. I lived in Louisiana, Shreveport, Louisiana, and uh, of course, the Louisiana Hayride is there. It's known as the Cradle of the Stars, and uh, I I I wanted to write and sing, and I bought me a little Martin guitar and started writing, and I would go up to the hayride and go backstage and meet the people, you know, and kind of networking a little bit, even at my young 17-year-old age. And uh, so it came to be that uh, time went on and I became a member of the Louisiana Hayride, which it took a a, a few years to do that. But uh, then I uh, uh, got a song recorded by a, a young man that was was on there and we went to Houston for him to record Benny Barnes was his name and and right now the name of the song slipped my mind but we went to Houston to for him to record my song and while there he asked uh, the executive of, of the Star Day Records to listen to me sing and his name was Pappy Daly and he did he liked uh, I don't know how he did like me but he found he saw something in there that could be worked on a little bit. Sometimes I can't hardly stand to listen to those old Star Day records, but uh, the people seem to still like them, you know. But anyway, he recorded my first session that night, a song called One Step Nearer to You, and I got what I uh, uh, not I got what I wanted. Oh, it's one that George and I did also on our album, but I can't think of the other one right now, but trying to remember too much. But I recorded my first song and came back and went to uh, Straight on the Hayride, and uh, I guest starred on a show first, uh, the first network television radio show was the uh, uh, Jubilee USA with Red Foley mm-hmm. uh-huh. show, and... Um, I guess starred on there a number of times, and and then uh, later we uh, uh, owned a record shop in in Shreveport, and my husband Shelby Singleton at that time, uh, he became uh, and uh, got to know the people at Star Day and Mercury Records, and he became regional sales manager of the of the area, and he was a very ambitious young man, and. He, he went ahead and became A&R director of Murphy Records, and he ran Murphy Records, and we moved to Nashville. And um, I did background singing. I sang with the Jordanaires and 
uh, we created a group out of the Jordan there, three of them and me and a lady by the name of Millie Perkham. The high, beautiful voice you hear on all those old songs mm-hmm. that came uh-huh. out of Nashville during the 60s. Well, and, and, and we called ourselves the Merry Melody Singers, and we did an album of, of the old quartet songs like Naughty Lady of Shady Lane and pop stuff. And uh, uh, I did background singing. Uh, but before that, I got ahead of myself. We came in, in uh, 1957 or 59, and, and I recorded an album uh, with George Jones. And uh, it was 12 Sides. I thought it was 12 Sides. We had a release on it called The It Country Style, which I was the first female to do a full album with George. Uh, and I was very honored to do that. And just recently, uh, a Bear Family out of Germany has re- released an incredible box set of George's All His Star Days records, Charlie Mercury records at that time from, I think from 56 to 63 or something. And it's got um, six CDs in there that has 33 songs on each CD. So you can imagine what a treasure it is. And I was lucky enough to have two songs that I wrote in that album. And I sang 14 songs in this album in the box set. Hmm. Uh, So Two of them had been lost all these years, and it surfaced when Bear Family put it out called a song called, uh, oh, uh, <laughs> my mind just left me again. One excuse is, a good, is, is as good as another was one of them, and um, uh, it, it's immaterial what the other one is, but they were lost, but they included them in that album. Okay, let's see. I'm getting long-winded here. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, during this period of from 2000, I mean, from 1960 uh, on, during the 60s, I recorded a, a number, a, a top 10 record with Farron Young called Keeping Up with the Joneses. I had a top 10 record on, called Old Records that I'm very proud of. Um, it was... Uh, I guess my biggest single record. Uh, of course, years later, I wrote with my husband Leon Ashley. I, I divorced Shelby, and I divorced after 15 years of marriage. And uh, as we went our separate ways, I, I met and married a radio executive, Leon Ashley, and uh, he was a kind of a, an amateur writer and singer, but. He wanted to know if I wanted to stay in the music business, and I did. And he sold the seven radio stations that he owned and came into the business with me. And he formed uh, uh, Ashley Records. And his first record out of the out of the shoot was a song called Laura, What We Got That I Ain't Got. And it was, of course, a monster record uh, uh, recorded by, I would say, 50 people like Kenny Rogers, Marty Robbins, Tom Jones, Brooke Benton, and all genres of music that was recorded. And if you're a country music buff, you you probably remember the song by Leon Ashley, Laura. And, uh, oh, let's see. I guess we see. Why don't you ask me something now? (laughs) (laughs) You're doing a fine job of taking us through history. (laughs) I'm just following along here. Um, <laughs> you just go. You want it back? I, I, that works for me. I don't have to ask any questions because you're doing great. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, so you're, you know, you still were doing. You, you've pretty much really never taken a serious break. You've always kind of stayed in it and and continued to be in the music industry. We did for for forty years. We worked uh, concerts on the road. That mm-hmm. was our that was our goal, and and we did, and we kept recording and putting our own records out, doing our own thing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, uh, if we seemed to disappear from the national charts, we weren't. We were just out doing our thing. We had our followers all over, and we toured Europe and and uh, in the United States, all the states, and uh, in. We sang. We did that until 2006, when my husband was stricken with with oral cancer in his tongue mm-hmm. for a string 
honor that death, you know, and and he lived to, from 2006 to 2013, which we didn't work at all, of course. Mm-hmm. And and he passed away in 2013, and I just uh, almost died with him because we were together 24-7 for 48 years. Wow. And uh, so we enjoyed being together and working together and singing and writing. We just, uh, that's what we did. And when he went, I thought I would never sing again, but my little guitar player that worked our road shows and fronted our band called Lonnie Spiker, Lynn and he adored each other, and they were good together on stage and, and as well. And uh, I knew I, I was asked to do my 80th birthday show to have a party for my 80th birthday and have a show. And, and these other entertainers came out and performed, and they wanted me to. And I, I had to really pray and think about that, but I did. And it, it, it got me back up there, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it fed my hunger. So the Lord just, uh, after that time, he just started giving me these songs for uh, my CD that you're talking about. You're going to play a couple out of called On the Other Side of Life, mm-hmm. which I wrote about my husband's passing and anyone who's lost a loved one, whether it's a spouse or what, uh, it, it has touched a lot of people because it was from the heart. God given the whole thing. I wrote in the, I did my liner notes for the CD that God was my executive producer, which he was. Mm-hmm. He wrote the songs. He gave me the voice to sing them. And of course, I had to get back, I had to get the voice back because it had laid dormant from 2006 to 2015 when I started singing again. And Mm -hmm. uh, it's built back up, and on this this album, you can, you know, Jesus is my pusher. I just recorded that this year. Actually, the song was recorded 50 years ago. There's one on YouTube, the original version of it. But um, I always wanted to write another verse to put a cap on it, you know, and I did the last verse of it I wrote this year, well, 2017, and uh, we put a new face on it, we re-recorded it, and put harmony on it, and and uh, it's, uh, it's a little different, but uh, it, it's being well accepted uh, in South Africa, the UK, and just uh, had uh, people all over uh, playing it, and like yourself, mm-hmm. you're playing it. Yeah. And so, uh, it, it's, uh, I, had, I have the audio, the, the one song CD on CD Baby, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it can be per- downloaded there, but I'm working on the full CD for it to put a... a whole CD out that'll be out in the near future if my guy will ever get get it finished. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's what I've been doing. So um, <laughs> you're, you're going to, let me just back up for just a second. So you're going to be putting out an album, but, um, and you mentioned two of the songs already that we're going to play, but I just want to kind of verify what we're doing here. Um, on the other side is the song that you wrote for the passing of your husband. And is that, that one is going to be on the album. Are you planning on using that as the album title? Now that's the one that was released into already out. Oh, okay. 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 That's where I got a little confused. Um, I'm sorry. That's okay. It, that's the title of the album that's out now and it's on YouTube also. Oh, okay. And how many songs are on that album? 12. Okay. So you have 12 songs out there on this album that's been out the there. Side of life. Yeah. Uh-huh. And that's got that song on it too. Mm-hmm. On the other side of life is on it, and then I chose you. Oh, okay. I so chose you has been a, a a well-received song off of the album, and it's okay. It's got a really good arrangement, a catchy, catchy melodic tune, and and people seem to enjoy it. Okay. You no, know, the new one is probably going to be uh, uh, Jesus is my pusher title of the album. Oh, okay. Okay. The new CD. 
Okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about that song because I think I want to play that one first. Jesus is my pusher. Um, so this is a new single that's out. It's not on any album as of yet, but it is out there as a single. Right. Okay. Just a single that can be downloaded on CD Baby. Um, and the some of the electronic media's that are out there, people can search it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And my 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 website is margiesingletonmusic dot com. Okay. And <laughs> and um, so if people are interested in this song, they can get their hands on it. Uh, is there hard copies of it, or is it only electronic not copies yet. at the moment? Not yet. No. Okay. That's why it's not hard copies yet. Okay. We're working on it. But they can find where they can download it, and this this is potentially going to be the next album's title, right. Jesus Is My Pusher. And these are all penned by you, right, Marchie? Yes. They're, oh. they're all penned by me. All of the all, all of the songs in the album, the, the CD, uh, On the Other Side of Life, was penned by me, except one that was a, a great song, and I didn't know that other people had recorded it until after I did. And I went ahead and put it out because it's uh, 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 a great song. Mm -hmm. And then my husband is singing one of the songs in there. He and I wrote uh, called Making Payments. Mm -hmm. But I wrote all the the other 10 songs solely by myself. And then the 11th one, Leon, with Leon. Wow. Oh, just amazing stuff. Um, I, we need to take a quick break, uh, Margie, but I'm hoping you okay. can hold on in there for just a minute. You got it. And when we come back, I want to play that song, Jesus Is My Pusher. This is the new one that is out um, as mm-hmm. an electronic version only. You guys can find it on the CD Baby and, and search it on some of your electronic where you normally buy music. But this is... Yeah, Casey, let me tell you. It, 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 they can see this on... Uh, I have a video of it on YouTube. Oh, okay. So they can and watch it, it, too. They can watch it, and they can get get a copy of it from... Not the, not the video, but the, okay. the audio of it. Nice, nice. Well, we're going to play that one, and uh, just everyone needs to know that this is going to be uh, potentially also the next album title. You want to be looking for that. But when we come back, Margie, we'll talk a little bit about um, some of the standout moments in your life, how people can reach out to you and play another one of your tunes from the album on the other side. Can you hang in there for just a little bit? I sure can. Thank you. Great. Well, we're going to be back with more uh, Margie Singleton an amazing, amazing lady, been in the music industry forever, has had amazing success in it, pens a lot of the music, uh, sings, and now she's kind of like having, she's like a cat. She has all these great little lives that she's done all these amazing things, and now she's on another another journey with brand new music that's going to be out there. We're so excited to hear more about this, but we're going to be back with more Margie in just a minute right here on the Wall to Wall Country Show on Penn's Peak Radio, plus that song, be listening for it, Jesus is My Pusher. And we're back with more Margie Singleton here. And back there, we just heard her new song. Such a great tune, Margie. Jesus is my pusher. This is her new single that's out there. And if you guys want to get your hands on it, you can check it out on CD Baby. Watch the video. And uh, such a cute tune. And I watched the video. It's actually kind of (laughs) funny. It's cute and funny, Margie. (laughs) I enjoy the video. I enjoy the song. Um, it's really kind of cute. What inspired the video? I don't know. Uh, a, a young man in my church, uh, Hendersonville Pentecostal, he's the um, uh, guitarist there, and he caught me one day after church. He said, I sure would like to do a video on, on your on your uh, Jesus is my pusher. I said, Really? I said, well, I don't know. That costs a lot of money, I'm sure. He said, no, I, I want to do it for you for free. But he said, I just bought me this new new uh, drone. You <laughs> saw the drone pictures, and he wanted to try it out. I said, well, let's go for it. And that's why I'm out in all those weird positions, because he wanted to use his drone. And everybody says that it's a very professionally done he, he's he's excellent. He's a smart smart man, and uh, I thought he did an excellent job on it. And, and 
uh, I just appreciate it. Appreciated him doing it, and it was fun. I I wouldn't have thought that was done by a drone. I thought that was you know a professional video like any other video I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought it was great. I really did. It was it was done. Of course, those those scenes with the drone out at the lake and on the boat dock, and but then we were in the church. Of course, that was regular film camera, but. Uh, in the church and different other scenes we did were were didn't use the drones, but all the all the drone pictures were done by him. And, well, he did it the whole thing, but mm-hmm. it was fun. It was. It's a great, and I, I I want people to go there and to check it out. You can find it on YouTube. Jesus is my pusher, and then of course you know be looking for the rest of that album to be released here in a little while. Yeah. Let's talk about this other album, which you also have some music that's really dear, close and dear to your heart. One of the songs on it, uh, we're going to actually play one after the interview, after we say our goodbyes. And then uh, my listening audience knows this, that this entire show gets recorded and it will play back again on Sunday, just in case anybody missed it. And I always like to close out the show with a song from the artist, if they have it, to remind everybody to listen in on Sunday morning. But one of the songs we were chatting about, Mar- uh, Margie, is I Chose You. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about that song? Well, it's just a song that I wrote. And, and as I say, I, I, all of, I, I feel like I, I'm, I'm very in tune with the Lord. And I, I felt that that the Lord gave me these songs uh, to get them out there to be heard, to bless people with. And uh, I uh, sometimes I don't even remember writing these songs. Okay. Like there's a couple on there that were just that just came to me and I had them. But I Chose You is uh, a song. And I went to Shreveport, Louisiana with my, uh, he calls me his other mother. He has a studio there. I was there when he was born. His mom was my biggest fan when I was on the Louisiana Hayride. I go down there most of the time to do my recording. That guitar work on Jesus Is My Pusher, I think, is just about as good as any guitarist in in the world. He he did such an excellent job on it. His name is Dexter Mathis, and he has D&D recording studios in Shreveport. And that's him doing all the things he and I uh, we arranged everything together, and he he's doing all the instrumentation, and he and I are doing all the harmony parts and everything. It's just a fun place to go, and I love I Chose You because it's, it's a good feeling song, and it gives you a good good spiritual feeling, I think. Well, that's awesome, and, and you know, I think I like the way... You know, you make a point of saying, you know, that, you know, you, you put your faith in God and he's going to direct you and, and, and you give all your credit of every, all the accomplishments that you've managed to, to do in your life and, and you want to credit God. And I think that's amazing. I mean, you've got some great um, things to be grateful for, all the albums that you've been able to do over the years, the singles that you've be, been able to put out there and, 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 and people have been blessed to be able to listen to your music. You've been honored uh, as a recipient of the Josie Award, um, you've been uh, also uh, inducted into the Atlanta Country Music Hall of Fame just recently. Um, do you have something in one particular thing? And I know this is probably an impossible question, so I'll <laughs> I'll say that right now. <laughs> but you know, or one or two, maybe uh, the absolute highlights of your life out of all these gifts that you've been able to accomplish and and people and things you've been able to do. Is there any one or two major things that really really, really come to mind when you think about the amazing things that happened in your career? Well, I was reminded the other day when I did a a show here, actually in my hometown, uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee, Country 101, uh, a guy by the name of Richard L. White has that show once a month, and and, uh, there was a lady there, and she said, I've just got to stand up and say something. I said, well, go right ahead, and she said... I was at your and Leon's show in, in um, oh, goodness, it was in California, and I can't remember the place. I remember that incident, but she said, I was just so thrilled. You and Leon got the biggest standing ovation that I ever saw anybody get. Now, this is when he had Laura, what's he got that I am got? Mm-hmm. And, and it just... It, 
that was a really a wonderful feeling. And then when she brought it back to my mind, it, it was. And, and uh, being inducted into the to the Atlanta Hall of Fame, Leon was from Atlanta, and we did a lot of shows in Georgia. And um, uh, that was a, a thrill for me. And, and the Josie, that was so unexpected. It was just incredible because, see, she t- they told me that I was up for a nomination uh, for an award. I had no idea about being inducted into the Hall of Fame. It was the Independent Country Music Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And so they were calling out people to get the awards, and they were about 10 away from my name being called, and she called my name. And I said, what? <laughs> so she told me to come down, and we were at the stadium, and I was way up in the bleachers, and my son happened to come in at that time, and he helped me down to the to the stage, and she called me up there, and she said that I was inducted into the Independent Country Music Hall of Fame, and that was just incredible. You know, it was just a, a great feeling, and uh, that's one of the highlights. And, of course, getting on the hayride and singing on the Grand Ole Opry, let me tell you something. In 1963, I had a hit called Old Records, you know who my background singers were? Hmm. Ray Stevens. Wow. And Priscilla Mitchell. Wow. <laughs> and, and so that was quite incredible. And, uh, uh, and and actually, I'm going to be inducted into the to the Northeastern Country Music Hall of Fame. Uh, it's a N A C A M I. I can't can't. Uh, it's going to be in Pigeon Forge. Mm-hmm. It's a very big deal, and I'm so happy. Uh, my friend, uh, uh, I, well, I just met him during this period. Uh, uh, oh, gosh. Scott Weichel. Mm-hmm. And uh, we become buddies. You know, you meet, I've just met so many good people on this, this in, in this uh, new era of time where we have, a way to get in touch, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm just thrilled to death about this this award that's coming up because it's a worldwide thing, well, and um, I'm just just real thrilled about it. Northeastern Country Music Hall of Fame. This is yeah. I mean, oh my God, it's North American Country Music Hall of Fame. I'm sorry. Okay, it's I just forgive if you listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's just, I mean, amazing. I mean, you know, you're at the ripe young yay age of uh, 82 right now, mm-hmm. correct? Yeah. And you're just still a ball of fire. You're still out there mm-hmm. doing stuff. I mean, I I just think that's amazing. I mean, you set a standard for, you know, these young artists that are coming in and, you know, they think they're going to be this big hot hit. And, you know, I think one of the things that they need to learn um, is longevity, and understanding that, you know, this is something that you're going to do and you're going to do for the rest of your life. And I just think that's amazing. And, and congratulations, Margie. Congratulations. Thank you, honey. I appreciate that. Yes, longevity and, and you know, uh, helping people along the way. You know, this business is so, sometimes can be so cutthroat, just mm-hmm. stepping over, you know, somebody. But uh, I've... I just, my fellow artists, I pitch them, like Judy Bailey is, is, I've met her through this period of time in the last few years, and she's become my soul sister. She loves the Lord, and and I don't know if you remember uh, Mo Bandy and Judy mm-hmm. Bailey, they had a song called Following the Feeling, and she had slow country dancing, and she's just incredible. And I pitch her anytime I can, and she does me. And and we we help each other. You don't walk on people. You can't. Get, you might get there, but you're not going to hang around, mm-hmm. you know, forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the only way to do that is to to be be honest and 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 thank the Lord as you grow up. You know, all He wants from us is obedience and praise. And and we fail to praise the Lord even in a even when we fall. We mm-hmm. got to get up and say thank you, Lord, for letting me get up this day. I do every day I live. That's awesome. 
I can't say enough about my God, and, and I plan on doing a whole lot more of that because as the time draws near for his return, I want to be washed up and ready. On a song you, you're just going to play called Peculiar People, mm-hmm. it says, I don't know when he's coming, but I don't think it'll be long. That's why I'm getting ready, washing up my soul. There you go. Margie, you know, I, I, I want to cut you loose. I don't want to hold you too much longer. We're going to we're gonna play I Chose You coming up, and then we also talked about On the Other Side of Life, which is your mm-hmm. song for the loss of your husband. Yeah. But real quick before we do that, what, what can your, how can your fans, you know, be in touch with you, and how can they find out you're talking about a new album that's going to be out there? How can they stay in touch with you, Margie? I mean, what's some of the best ways for them to reach the out? Best, the best way, they can reach out to me on Facebook, or they can reach out to me at MargieSingletonMusic.com. Okay. All right. That's and cool. there's a music. There's a Margie Singleton fan page also. Oh, that's awesome. If they want to reach out and, and, you know, talk to you about the, their, their music and how it's affecting them, especially with Facebook, if if you're on there, yeah, that's I'm a great Twitter. way. I've got a guy helping me on Twitter and, okay. and uh, uh, Instagram and all those places. I'm not too fluent on those things. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of, if you, if you look on YouTube, I have a video called Lost in Cyberspace. Mm-hmm. Because I am lost in cyberspace. <laughs> You'll have to get a kick out of looking at that. All okay. right. That's awesome. Uh, the new album, planning on coming out. What What else can your fans be looking forward to in 2018, Margie? Well, I have I have most of the songs recorded for the for a new country album also. But it's, it's a little ways down the road, mm-hmm. at least a couple of months, two or three months. But uh, I want to get this new gospel CD out. That's my. Uh, I, I want to to do that before I do anything else. But I'm still writing. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm still performing. I have um, shows coming up. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of my next show. Actually, I'm going to going to Pigeon Forge for the. Uh, North, uh, uh, what did I say? It the was. North American, the world, North American Country Music Hall of Fame. Right, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, that that's coming up soon, and I'm I'm just looking forward to that. And right now, I'm not down with the flu. There's not too much in the immediate future. Okay. Like this week or not. <laughs> okay. Well, you need to get better so that you can get on. Uh, Get on uh, working on getting that album out there, and and go receive your do do uh, do award that is coming your way. And thank you. I also, I just remembered I'm going to be on the Midnight Jamboree. Okay. On on uh, on May the tenth. So May the fifth. Okay. May fifth, the Midnight Jamboree on WSM Radio. Okay, people Here. can be listening for that. Um, Earned Stub Record Shop. Show. You're a you're a staple in the industry. You set a standard that people should always be good people and and not give up and and go for the longevity rather than the quick short burst of fame and then get forgotten. Um, people could learn a lot from you, Margie. I think you could be a great inspirational speaker for for people today. And I'm just honored and pleased that I, you had the opportunity to be on my show. Thank you so much for your time, my dear. I absolutely adore you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for allowing me to, and you're precious. And and uh, just remember, God loves you. All right. Well, we're gonna. And I do too. Oh, I love you too, Margie. I'm gonna ha- we're gonna say goodbye because I know you're not feeling well. So we're gonna give you that chance to go get better and uh, for sure. And you know, just keep us in mind if when you do get that album out, you're more than welcome to come back on the show and we'll talk oh, about that that new album and all those new tunes you're gonna be putting out there. So please keep us in mind for that. Great, thank you, honey. I sure will. And we're going to play two more of your songs. This is off the On the Other Side of Life album. Um, We're going to do the title track at the end of the show, and we're going to play I Chose You. And thank you again, dear. And you take care of yourself. You get better now. And uh, good luck with everything, and stay in touch, my friend. I will. God bless. All right. Take care, my dear. And that's Margie Singleton. I Chose You is coming up right now. And we've got another one of her songs coming up at the end of the show. Don't go anywhere. More great country music right now on Penn Speak Radio.